You like bands? Yes. Are they good for deadlifting? Yes. Maybe. You don't just say yes to say yes. Sometimes. All right, then no. Uh, what? It depends. Uh, ah, everyone's favorite answer. But not the diapers, though. <laughs> Maybe. I mean, Are you old? Do you wear depends? Do you wish you didn't have to? Well, bet, I bet deadlifts could help that. You don't help that even more. Banded deadlifts, baby. Is that the intro? Uh, That's the intro. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to go over banded deadlifts. Good luck, everybody. There's the intro. Bingo. All right, what's up guys? So this week we're going to cover a few different banded deadlift variations that we all like to program for lifters, lift, lifters of ours. Uh, each one has its own benefits in place and training, so we're going to get right into it. So very first one we're going to go over is something you've probably seen before, it's normal banded deadlift with the bands over the bar. So real quick, I'm not going to make a very in-depth explanation of this because it's pretty simple and if you can't figure this out then you probably shouldn't be using bands. <laughs> really really easy way to set up bands. If you're on a large platform you just loop one end of the one end of the band to the other end and that's it. Now a lot of people don't have an 8x8 platform so if you, have a, <laughs> if you have a 4x8 platform now here's here's the big difference here if you are on a 4x8 platform you want to use a bigger band, right? Because that platform is bigger, so that band is gonna stretch more, so we can use a smaller band that's gonna have more tension. If I'm on a shorter platform here, I wanna use a bigger band because it's not stretching as much, so it'll still have about the same amount of tension, right? We're evening out that short, shortness in the platform. Something you do not want to do, and you will probably never need to do because nobody is strong enough to need to use as much band tension is Challenge to, accepted. Is to double a band and to put all four strands over the bar, right? That is a quadded band. You don't need to do that. That's probably going to give you about 200 pounds of band tension on each side, depending on which band you're using. So don't do that. You don't need to do that. So, all right, we're going to go into the actual band and double. Yeah, quadded. All right, guys, so we're going to actually show you uh, banded deadlifts and, uh, you know, how to set it up. Pretty simple. It's just an actual, you know, normal deadlift with bands over the bar. We're just going to show you how this might be beneficial for you in your training. So you've probably seen banded deadlifts a lot. You've probably seen them labeled as speed work, uh, which is generally how you're going to perform a banded deadlift. I'm just going to have Amber actually hop onto the bar here and show you why bands might be beneficial for you. So whether you realize it or not, when you perform a normal deadlift, when you're going through the range of motion, you slow down at the top of the lift, right? And when we talk about uh, performing these heavy lifts and we talk about treating every single rep that you do in training as a max effort lift, that means that you're gonna be moving explosively and with good intention throughout the entire lift. So something that happens when we're training with some maximal weights is that when we lift the bar, we get lazy and we don't try as hard when we get towards the top of the lift because I'm here and I know that I'm gonna be locking out the lift so I kind of slow down and relax. So what's nice about these bands here when we have them over the bar is when Amber's gonna go execute this deadlift, she has downward pushing force or downward pulling force on the bar the entire time and it's gonna force her to maintain good positioning throughout the entire lift and it's gonna force her to accelerate against the bar, right? She's gonna have added force against the bar so she's gonna to have to try harder as the bar gets farther away from the floor. So <clears throat> something I see quite a bit here and is a good application for bands outside of just speed work is when people go to perform the deadlifts, uh, come up a little bit talked about like the slouching earlier. So some people, when they get the bar to their knee, the upper back tends to slouch and they tend to lose positioning in their hips here. So when we have this added force here, it's gonna force Amber to maintain some good thoracic extension here. She's gonna keep that chip, whoa. Uh, <laughs> gotta, so go back down to your knee. So like I said, people lose lose this lat tension and upper back tension here. So having the downward pulling bands here is going to give get some good cueing for her to actually maintain that all the way through the lift. She's going to keep her hips in line with the bar. She's going to come up. She's going to get a nice clean lockout. If your shoulders are a little soft there, but whatever, it's fine. No, it's not. Practice like you play. Play it. Just here. Uh, another, another situation where I, I like to use bands with my lifters is generally with my sumo deadlifters, right? I like to have a lot of people perform uh, conventional deadlifts in their off-season programming or far off for a meet. 
but a lot of sumo deadlifters are really, really deconditioned to conventional work. So a good compromise to that is using a lighter straight weight load, right? Less actual weight on the bar, which is gonna be less fatiguing for people and adding band tension to the bar because that's gonna make the lift harder towards the top, right? We don't have a lot of band tension when we're at the bottom here, but as we lift the bar, there's gonna be more and more band tension when we get to lockout. So really, really good situation for somebody who hasn't been doing a lot of conventional work and wants to train heavier conventional, right? It's gonna be heavier at the top, so we can leave the actual load lighter and add some band tension to help somebody get acclimated to conventional work again. Okay. All right, guys, so one final note here uh, when we're talking about banded deadlifts and particularly the bands over the bar, we're gonna go over a couple other variations that are a little bit different. Uh, when we're using bands or accommodating resistance, this applies to chains too, for whether it be speed work or overload work or whatever. For raw lifting, there is no need to go over 10 to 15% of your one rep max in band tension or chain weight. So if you squat 500 pounds, 10% of that is 50 pounds, yeah, right? I passed. Yeah. Uh, so there's no need to use more than 50 pounds in chain weight or band weight. So that'd be a 20 pound chain on each side of the bar or something like a red mini band or a micro mini band. If you get your bands from Elite FDS, that'll give you about 50 to 60 pounds of band tension. Uh, if you don't know what the band tension is on the bar, get a scale. Uh, you can get a lug luggage scale, super easy to actually know how much band tension you're using. But yeah, don't overdo the band tension. It's pointless and it's gonna completely change the mechanics of the lift and you're not gonna get much benefit out of it, so. Next addition to the deadlift with band variations, we're going to talk about bands. We're going to talk about forward pulling bands. Um, so here you can see that I have bands. two bands attached to the carabiners up here. So, but if you don't have this kind of setup, you can either have somebody help you, and they can hold a band up front. But uh, for this video, we're going to showcase exactly how we have it set up here. So Chris is going to demonstrate. <clears throat> He's going to get set up on the bar. And what forward pulling bands are going to do is it's going to actually help reinforce lat tension and extension. So those bands pulling forward, if you do not reinforce that lat tension and seating those lats back to that back pocket there, those hips, it's going to pull you out of position. He also needs to really think about that upper back extension here. Now he's nice and tight on the bar and he's going to wedge himself in and go through the movement. If he loses any tension whatsoever, he's going to come forward and lose that bar path. Not fun. It's not fun. You can injure yourself. So this forward pulling band is going to reinforce a stacked position through and through. <clears throat> uh, something else to keep in mind when you guys are going to try this. Uh, one, I would start with just using it as a warm-up drill. Uh, it's not really something I would program as like a main movement, use it as a warm up leading up to your actual working sets to drill that position and that technique. Another thing too is the amount of actual tension you have on the bar, right? So when we have the bar set up, it's somewhat loose, like it's not, it's, there's a little bit of tension on the bar and I'm only standing about a foot away from the bar to pull it into me just to feel enough band tension on the bar that I have to pull that bar into me and I can feel my lats turning on to keep the bar close. If I'm standing all the way back here and I have to try really hard to pull this bar into me to the point where, to the point where it's completely changing my start position and it looks nothing like what it would with a real deadlift, then I'm probably not doing what I should be doing. Another thing too here is when I go to lift this, I'm gonna be leaning back a lot to complete this lift. Like this looks nothing like a real deadlift when I'm standing at the top, so. You only want enough band tension that it's going to actually reinforce tension within your body yep. as you go to execute the movement. So if I was doing, uh, if I was working with a beginner, I would use this movement, say in a one-on-one -on -one session, and I would use this to help them understand how to wedge themselves into the bar, how to feel their lats, and keep that bar up against their bodies. Perfect, there you go. You got some weak ass hips? Maybe. Does your girlfriend complain that you ain't going hard enough? I have a wife, so no. Maybe she should complain. Oh, well. We're gonna teach you how to fix that with this BAM! Hinge! <clears throat> Alright, so Brian, why do you
you have me hooked into this van? Because we're going to do uh, reverse pulling bands. Is that how I would? That's not how I want to say that. Hip banded deadlifts. Oh, no jeez. And you know, hip, hip band, band, hip, hip banded deadlifts. I'm off the game. Yeah. Hip, band and hip deadlift. So, we're dancing against step to the bar here. And kind of like the previous one, I'm not going to be like, heave, and pull way back here. I'm just going to give a little tension on the hips. Yeah. Show them what to do. All right, so I made it out of those. There are a few reasons for this. First reason we're going to go over here is because it's going to help a lot of people with engaging your glutes. If you have a hard time engaging your glutes with the conventional deadlift, especially, this is going to be a, a big help for you. Uh, now, this is quite a big problem with a lot of people, so this is a good thing to add in your arsenal. Yes. So pretty much you just have someone either hold a band like this, or you can even hook it up to a rack, you know, Apparatus. somehow. Uh, but the main thing is just have a band here with tension that's going to be pulling you. So when you come to deadlift, you know, the band's pulling tension on your hips the whole time. So when you come up, as you come, you had to drive into the band, which is going to make you use your glutes a lot more than you would have to. So you're using a lot more glute and you're engaging everything fully. Uh, this is going to cue you so when you actually have, don't have the band around your hips, uh, you're getting that feeling and, and you know what it feels like to you actually use your glutes. So okay, you're, te you're yeah. teaching your body how to move. Exactly. So like, for example, there's a time, there's a point in time where I would get here and like everybody would be yelling at me, glutes, this and that. I'd be like, I don't know what's going on. Yep. And I didn't know how to close it. But then as I got wiser and more knowledgeable, I learned like, oh, you can teach your glutes to fire. Like I wasn't even firing my glutes. I was just, I was getting here and I was trying to like do this thing and that. All you gotta do is squeeze and you go forward. Well, this is gonna teach you how to squeeze. Absolutely. Over -developed. Yeah, yeah, I got an overdeveloped lower back because I didn't do it right for a long time. So we're fixing that. Yeah, exactly. So That's why just... we're teaching you so you don't have to fix it. You can do it right, right the first time. Yeah. Yep. So band around the hips. As you come up, your glutes engage more making you push through the band. So, <laughs> Brian actually used to have an issue with this. What? Yep, yep, he wouldn't properly hinge. That's why his lower back is so developed. So instead of hinging backwards with the deadlift, it's, he would just kind of round over his low back, especially back. here. So, we put this band here. It's also gonna help with <clears throat> learning to hinge back. So here he's got no option other than to push his hips backwards. Yeah. I didn't realize there was that much tension. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. instead of just yeah. rounding yeah. over. Look how much better that is with the band there. Yep. Take the band away and have him do it without it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's, I, I'm telling you, there's not much band tension. It's no. almost, you almost can't even feel it. But it's just enough to give you that slight pull backwards to put you in the correct position. Exactly. Slide him out. Don't need much. Helps you learn how to deadlift right. Get them hips ready. Oh, hey, didn't see you there. <laughs> <laughs> what do we just do? Banded deadlifts. So you learned how to use bands for deadlifts. A few different banded deadlift variations that can help you from basically like top to bottom. Top to bottom. Mm -hmm. You know, we hips, you got weak top, you got weak bottom. Now you're going to be power bottom. With bands. Next week. In the gym. In the gym. That's, yeah. <laughs> Next week, we're going to do some more benching. Next week, we're going to do more squatting. Yeah. Squat we're doing right. something. Yeah. yeah. Squatting. We're going to educate you some more next week. Yeah. So come on back. And uh, I don't know. It'll be fun. We don't know yet. You, you don't never know, know what's going to happen. You never know. So. That's right. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> oh, Chad! Yeah. <laughs>